Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to the Crow's Nest Railroad. Well, it's time to wrap up our build for this little electric shunter. Today we're going to talk about some of the details. I can't show you everything, but I'll hit some of the highlights on creating the outer body shell for the locomotive. If you're interested in the electronics and all that sort of thing, as I put together the power chassis, then take a look at last week's video and that'll give you a number of details. But let's get busy. Well, I'm happy with the test so far, so I think it's time for me to tear this thing apart and start thinking about some sort of shell and, and body and exactly where I want to locate the controls. You can see I've started to carve things up a little bit. I cut this down and narrowed the top of the base just a little bit. I have a half a sheet of, I think this is 3 8 Baltic birch. Anyway, these are the cab sides, rough cut, all this is rough cut. And this is the hood sides. the hood front and top, the cab front and back, and the skirts down by the wheels, the side plates. So anyway, just some rough dimensions cut on the table saw. So this is the little cab that I'm working on right now. Um, you can see I cut the windows out using a Forstner bit on the drill press makes a nice clean cut uh, right now i'm working on some doors for the side here's one of the side panels and i'm working on a door for that typically these little locomotives from what i can tell were open on the sides they were covered on the top and the front and some were even open on the back but out here in the desert, uh, this is where the electronics are going to go in the cab here, and they would just get really overloaded with dust and dirt and things if I had this open cab. So I'm going to go ahead and put sides on this, but I'll have an access door where I can reach in and get to everything. And then, although it's not very conventional, I'm actually going to start out at least putting my controls for this on the top of the cab. So let me explain just something. I'm not really encumbered by the need to make this thing very prototypical. There are certain things that are a given as far as the dimensions are concerned. Of course, one is the battery. So the hood of this little locomotive will have to accommodate this battery. So instead of a diesel engine, obviously, on the real ones. But so that's pretty much you know there's not too many options for covering up this battery the frame of this locomotive is already defined for me so really i just have to do some sort of a cab to hold the electronics and i already know that i would really like the controls for this not to be on a tether i really don't like a handheld controls hooked with a wire or remote control. I don't like to fiddle with that. I want the controls as part of the locomotive. I got really used to that on some of the larger locomotives at our railroad club, uh, pulling public runs and things like that. I just like the controls on the locomotive. But I don't want to have to dig around down in the bottom. So I really, on my little railroad here, there will be lots of throttle activity because I have a lot of curves, a lot of tight radius curves, and ups and downs. So basically you're fiddling with the speed control all the time. So I want it accessible and I want it between 18 and 20 inches high. That works for me. So what that means is I'm going to start out by having the actual controls on the top of the cab. So I'll have a throttle here and a couple of toggle switches and i've got a little uh, volt readout but that will be seen through the window i'll put that on the inside and i'll have the door on the side down here where i can get at things so this will technically be probably out of scale 
this little guy will not be exactly one inch to the foot. He'll be a little bit bigger than that, but, but that's okay. Well, this looks frightening, doesn't it? Plenty of clamps here. I had some glue drying overnight. So I'm starting to work on the housing for the battery. This little guy goes in here, obviously. And I've got to fabricate a little grill area here. And I've got the two sides, and we'll come up with a lid here. Maybe like a little exhaust stack or something like that. So i got to pull all these clamps off and make some more progress. Well, this is just about ready to have a tear down and then start painting. It is a 5-inch gauge electric 12-volt uh, locomotive, and it's based off of the Maxitrack power chassis that they offer, where you get the steel chassis and the wheels and the motor and the controls and uh, it's up to you to build the body now they do have a number of locomotives that they build and sell on that that also use this platform but this is not one of them this is a freelance uh, kind of a crazy build of of my own design so you can see a little five inch gauge here over in the back you can see his big brother that is the seven and a half inch gauge outline it's made to resemble a little bit of a porter locomotive and then behind him down there is the other five inch gauge locomotive i have which is a actual steam locomotive coal-fired steam and as soon as i get to a point of completion on the railroad track and get all that done then i can get back to work uh, on the steam engine to bring him up to speed. But for right now, let's take another look at this guy before I tear it apart and I'll show you some of the details. Okay, this is obviously the main deck here. Inside of here will be where the battery is. Got some handrails. These are little soffit vents that I found that were just the right size for me to use. This is a little motorcycle light that I got at the auto parts store. Uh, just some conduit for the smokestack and this was some steel grating that I was able to find at a metal supply shop. So I've got um, some aluminum on the side just to protect the edge. Most of this is Baltic birch plywood. So we got some stairs, we got a little skirt down here. These little buffer beams are part of the chassis kit steel and uh, like I say, this lid comes off and the battery will be inside of here. Let's take a look at the cab. So I admit, this is a little unconventional. Uh, whimsical is a good word that someone shows for this uh, on one of the pictures that I posted. So some small handrails, a little latch, and there you go. The electronics will get mounted to this board and then this board I can easily attach on the back of the cab. And this will be a little voltage display that I can see through the back window. Well, it's not gonna paint itself. So let me tear everything apart, start to get everything primed and painted. Well, there's a boatload of parts there. I gotta get everything sorted out, figure out which ones need etching primer, the metal parts, which ones need sandable primer, and then um, get that done and then figure out some of the final colors. This pile gets the etching primer, and this pile the sanding primer. Alright, there's etching primer coat, and the sandable filling primer first coat. Well, before I put color on any of these parts, the wood parts, I always use a filler or a sanding type of primer paint. This is the one I used this time. Sometimes it's called sanding filler primer, but basically in addition to the primer base, you get a powder particulate that can fill in the grains of the wood. You can see it's all over my hands here. 
but that tends to minimize the grain in the wood and allows me to get a more metallic look when I apply the coat of paint. So just a couple of coats of this and work it in with some sandpaper and you get a remarkably smooth finish for a piece of wood. Well, I think I got everything organized. Red on both sides. This is the black group. And more black here. I think I have all the tiny screws figured out. If not, I may have to change something later. And finally, the burgundy group. Fingers crossed that I got everything sorted okay. Let's get to painting. Well, there's overspray everywhere in the shop. Well, I'm completely out of paint, used up everything. So, yesterday was a full day of spraying. Let's see if we can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And there we have it, just about all done. Let's take a look at some of the final details. Got all the painting on. You can see I've got some lining on here, some accent lining. I've got plastic in all of the windows. So I took a sheet of plastic And I cut out all the shapes on the bandsaw and then smoothed out the edges at the sander. And then with some white glue, I tacked them into place with the glue before I put the discussions back on. Same for the doors. I got the glass in here. And that'll keep all the dust and the dirt out of the electronics. You can see all the goodies in here. Here's the main breaker, and here over here is the main controller panel. Here's a little voltage readout, which I can see through the window there when I'm operating it. And then, of course, all the controls up here. Here's the headlamp. This will be forward, neutral, and reverse. This is an electronic brake, basically reverses the polarity coming off the motors. And then here is the actual throttle control here. Well, that's going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed that. I had so much fun and really exciting to have a little daily driver like this here on the Crow's Nest Railroad. And it is really surprising how well this pulls and does exactly what I need it to do. You know, it's got a short wheelbase and it handles the tight radiuses really well and it pulls strong enough to get the job done. In fact, it even goes up the 3% and 2.5% grades that I have in a couple of places here on my railroad. So I am really excited and I think Maxitrack came up with a great little product to allow DIY dudes like myself to build a little locomotive like this. Thank you so much for watching. Wow, it really means a lot. Hope to see you right here next time.